So you work with the leading men and ladies of Broadway. Is it different when you're working with them and their brands and they're established and they're stars and they're going to put the fannies in the seats, as they say, <laughs> as opposed to someone who's just starting out? How do you work with them to make the best out of their brands and what their goals are? You know, I think it's interesting working with people at all different points of their career, right? You know, I'll work with people who are massive movie stars in the world and I'll get five minutes with them and I'll be able to know that in that five minutes they're gonna deliver to me behind the camera exactly what they want to deliver and what they need to deliver because they've done it a million times. So my job when working with different uh, actors at different stages of their career is to kind of know when to get involved and when to get out of the way. And I think a lot of times with bigger stars, bigger celebrities, a little bit of direction goes a long way and then you get out of the way and you let them kind of do their magic. I think there are people that I work with that are just coming out of college or are just going into college and that might take a lot more work to help them gain confidence in front of the camera. I give clients homework sometimes before a, before a shoot where I'll say, think about words that describe you, think about colors that describe you, give me any information that you can give that shows that you've taken a second to think about what your brand is, to think about what you're trying to portray to the world. And I think one of the things that I love so much about where we're at as a culture is that it's becoming a lot less about like fitting into a particular brand that already exists and more about bringing your authenticity to the camera. And that for me is really exciting because then you just get to experience humans rather than make them into one particular type or another. As I was going through so many of your pictures and just, again, these are works of art. Literally, you know, I, I'm looking at each picture and I'm getting, like you said, because you've been a dancer and at the highest level, you see the motion in a still picture. Then you also see the emotion in pictures just in people's eyes. And take us through those processes when you're, you're shooting with someone, really trying to get that out of them. You know, I think so much of my process, it all stems from movement and that can be the tiniest movement as an initiation for the photo where it can literally be me reminding the person to take a breath. It can be as simple as that. It can literally be me reminding the person to like refresh their eyes. It can be something so tiny, tiny, tiny. I'm positioning people's hands sometimes just as like little bits of movement that maybe the camera doesn't even see just so that there is something activated within them. But then it, you know, when it comes down to a photograph of a dancer or a massive production photo of a show, I'm going in and kind of like chiseling away at every little detail where I'm saying, oh, you know, the person that's in the third row needs to lift their pinky finger up a tiny <laughs> bit higher because it needs to fall in line with every other person that's in the row behind them. You know, I'm getting that detailed a lot of the time. But again, the joy is that when you're working with professionals at the top of their field, so much of what I need to accomplish is already being done for me. So I've worked together with you and collaborated on several shoots already. And I'm thinking as you're saying that the common denominator between the shoots is there's a lot of people around. Lots of cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, wow. always. Whether you're filming a solo artist, as we did in one play, mm -hmm. or a whole group campaign, mm -hmm. you know, with a lot of people. And yet, by the way, you are the calm in the storm. And, and, our, and our styles are different. I'm telling jokes nonstop, and you know it's like, <laughs> sure. blah, 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 blah. How is it different from working with one artist or when you have to represent several people to capture a whole campaign? Is it different? How do you change your focus? How do you make everyone feel included? You know, for me, it, it is oddly uh, very similar, where I think it is about kind of tuning out the noise, creating a joyous space for me and whoever the subject is. I know if I'm in a good mood, I know that I hope that people on set will be in a good mood. And so I always try to operate from a place of positivity, at least outwardly. I might be panicking, <laughs> I might be panicking inside, I might be panicking to my team, which I can never do any of these shoots without them. Uh, but to the client and to the, the subjects, I'm always trying to operate from a place of joy and movement and happiness and just kind of like, I'm all about music on shoots. And it pains me when I can't have music on shoots, which, you know, a lot of times when there's video, I can't have music <laughs> on shoots. Uh, nudge, but nudge. Yeah, exactly, you know, there are shoots where it's really tough to drown out the noise. Like, I mean, the MTA shoot that we did, 
which was this really exciting campaign where we were getting to kind of welcome Broadway back after the pandemic, was, I mean, what was that, like 50 people on set in a subway platform? In two hours. In two hours, including load in, load out, set up, breakdown, all of it had to happen in two hours. So of course my wheels inside are going a million miles a minute and trying to check everything and make sure everything's right. But I know that if I connect with the subjects and I just create this positive energy, it will hopefully read on camera. Well, speaking of your team, how many people generally do you have on, on shoots with you? It really depends on the type of shoot, but I definitely, I always have my associate photographer, Evan Zimmerman, who is, you know, literally keeps me afloat. Evan. <laughs> we love, like, I don't know what I would do without Evan. Um, and then I have an incredible team of like second assistants, third assistants, and digitechs, and you have art directors, you have set designers, you have lighting designers. I mean, any of the Broadway show production photos that you see of mine could not happen without hundreds of people, even though it's my name a lot of times on the photo credit. When I see my name on the photo credit, I see the hundreds of people that got me to that point and got all of us to that point. As the kid you once were, speaking to the kid you are now, Peter Pan. <laughs> I'll take it. What would you have told yourself your career was going to be and have you exceeded those dreams or are you just halfway into the journey? I mean, I, I like to think that I'm halfway through the journey or less, but I also know that it's all exceeded everything that I thought it could be. I mean, there have been so many moments in my career where I've looked around the room and I've just gone, like, how the heck did I get here? You know, like, who, who put me in a room with Lin-Manuel Miranda? Like, who put me, how did this all happen that I got to collaborate with these people? And yeah, I just, I feel unbelievably lucky, but I am still hungry. <laughs> you know, I'm still, I just love what I do and I love to create, so I want to keep doing that as long as I can. And the f amazing thing about photography is that I always knew with dance there was a shelf life, because physically there just is for ballet dancers. I mean, earlier when you said 40, I was like, wow, do ballerinas yeah. good? That's, that's on the really, you know, it's a really lucky body to make yeah. it to 40 in the ballet world. But as a photographer, I feel so freed by the fact that I'm in my mid thirties now and I can just foresee doing this for the rest of my life. And at the same time, I also know based on my experience of losing my dance career that as devastated as I would be were I to go blind or were, to some, were something to happen where I just couldn't be a photographer anymore, I know and have faith that by the lessons that I learned when I was in my early 20s, losing that career, I know that I could figure out a way to find something else. And that is incredibly freeing. So, Matt Murphy, on behalf of Sharon Daster and myself, we thank you so much for coming. And um, everybody, tune in next time where I'll take another deeper dive.